Okay, so in the last video we were talking about insertion sort and we did a brief um, analysis uh, of its complexity, of its time complexity and we talked about um, how the algorithm worked. So now we want to go for a formalization, for a formal proof that the algorithm not only seems to work and not only makes sense but it also is correct. And um, for a quick recap, we said that for a sequence like, um, say, 2, um, for um, 42, uh, okay, 42, and uh, say, um, 7. For, for this array, for example, uh, what we would be doing if we wanted to sort it um, would be, and actually let's make this slightly more interesting maybe, by having 7 here and, um, and uh, 6 here. So we want to sort uh, this array and um, what I told you was, we start by saying how this portion is unsorted. And insertion sort works by selecting a number and let's suppose we have this piece of memory here and a box out of this. And we are saying that the sorted portion is this, that is uh, nothing, and we say, hey, is 7 greater or equal than anything that is uh, to the left? And um, when, well, uh, there is nothing to the left, so we can safely say that the sorted portion of this array, the sorted known portion of this array, is in fact um, here. Seven is a single element. A single element has the property of being sorted in whatever the list is and whatever the sorting is. Uh, if you only have one element in your list, independently of the sorting um, system you are using, the list is sorted. So now you say, hey, this is the sorted portion of this array and this is the unsorted. And let's use a different color. Unsorted. Alright, so now we are going to do the following. And we are calling this variable of x and uh, oh, we were calling this variable of x in the previous video so let's keep with that. And so we say uh, 42 uh, so this is the, the, the array, right? And we are picking 42 and when we pick 42 we virtually say that uh, the 42 is no longer in this list or in this part of the list uh, that is and we want to increase um, the sort of version to something greater and that something greater is going to be something like this and so this is supposed to be sorted and well we only have three elements right so this is an array of size three um, so all right and we say is 42 greater than seven and 42 is in fact in fact greater than seven so we we put 42 here and 42 is now sorted and we can safely take it off x. Alright, so now the exciting thing happens. We have 7, 42 and 6 and we want to sort the wall array. We want to um, the unsorted portion to cease existing. And so we say that this is the unsorted portion and we are going to pick 6 and put it in this box. And we are going to say now, hey, is 6 
um, lesser or equal to 42 and yes, 6 is in fact lesser or equal to 42 and so 6 is no longer here and 42 comes to this position to open room for 6 alright, so 6 is lesser or equal to 42 Okay, so is 6 lesser or equal than, than 7? And yes, 6 is in fact uh, lesser or equal than 7. So we move 7 from here to here. Let me get my pen back. And 6 is greater or equal than, 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 than uh, lesser or equal than nothing. And, um, and yes, it, it is uh, nothing, so it's the, the first position. There's nothing to compare, in fact, so we say 6 goes there. And that was in search and sort. We saw this cal calmly in the, the previous video, so. Uh, this was just a quick re recall, recap of how it worked. Um, it's fairly si simple. There are many animations so showing how a certain sort works. But it is somewhat easy and trivial, so there's not much to, to get into um, with regard to is how a certain sort works. So, that done. Um, let's let's go to to what this video proposes to do, and that is um, proof of correction of insertion chart. I'm having a small issue here with uh, the recording. working now yes all right so the the proof I'm going to do uh, now is um, is more of a, a reasoning about how to um, to assert and uh, assert is a key word here um, the correction of an algorithm and this is based on um, University of Cambridge algorithms notes it's a uh, part 1a model of their degree and um, I really like the way they place assertions on their pseudocode and they come up with a precondition and a postcondition based on the, um, 
on Belmont's uh, contract and I think that's on let me see rapidly their, their notes um, and here it is um, Belmont, sorry, I said Belmont, uh, Bertrand Meyer um, the pre and post condition and I'm reading their notes in the 2019-2020 edition page 19 um, and they say the pre and post condition together from form a kind of contract using the terminology of Petra and Meyer between the routine and its color and this precondition post condition uh, way of reasoning and way of defining um, exactly what is going on with an algorithm is really uh, organized and simple and then they come with a um, regular search uh, in the form of comments um, and that ensures uh, that um, the developer, the coder, the programmer uh, does not forget um, what he is expecting, what he is expecting for uh, from the their environment, environment uh, sorry, invariants. And so here's, uh, and, and maybe I can actually uh, copy and paste the pseudo code to the canvas. Let me see. I hope this works. Okay, it seems it works. Great. Uh, it's a bit a tad too small though. Uh, how would I go about resizing this? Something to come up here and allow me to to resize it. Um, okay, Control T. It seems, and it is a big was keyboard okay okay shortcut it's an ambiguous shortcut um the two box uh, no how do i do this um let me think which size this one says canvas so uh, no it's not the the kind of size I want why is this hmm? okay You see, it should have, I would expect that, um, maybe if I, wait, and this one is what? This one it clearly is not what I want. Wait, wait, wait. Alright, here we go. So let's go back to uh, hit an enter maybe. Uh, okay. I confess I don't really know how I managed to do the what I needed, but it seems to be correct. Yeah. 
Now if I go back to the layer I want, and I think it's this one, the pencil layer, okay. So, oh, and now I want to merge with layer below. Awesome. Okay, things work. And as you can see, Cambridge has these comments here. And they make a lot of sense. And we are going to work with this. So let's analyze what they are doing here. Uh, they are not uh, implementing a search sort in the same way I did. And the key difference is in the lines 15, where they come up with a function named swap that swaps to, to elements. And that's not what I had written. Uh, the way I implemented the search sort. Um, swaps them um, in a, what I think is more proximate with how insertion sort works. So you can always come up with different solutions for the same um, implementation solutions for the same algorithm, and that's how protocols, standards, specifications. Uh, where there is room for freedom on an implementation, it's usual to there be different implementations. And so, here, um, let me have another look to what they wrote. So, this for loop is quite essentially the same I had written. It goes for, it has a variable hi, and it goes, it starts at when, and it goes to length of A, and A is our array. There we go. And what we wrote was uh, our array was V, and the, its size was N minus 1. And we also started it at 1. So our array had, um, had these. these um, it, it started at 0. And, and so does this one, both start at zero. Um, okay, and here is an interesting thing. So this says, tell, tell, tell us that it goes from when, and it's a closed interval, to, uh, and let's call length of a, uh, hen, it goes to hen excluded, uh, which is the same as saying we have 1 to hen minus 1. Alright, so it is the same as our, and once again, um, I think it's clear that A is an array indexed from um, 0 all the way up to n minus 1. Alright? So, and this len function returns um, n, um, the, the number, on, it's what we call usually of nth, that is, um, for example, if you have 0 uh, is the first position of our array, so you are saying basically that it's the first position so it's it's um, uh, the position plus one I think these are called cardinal numbers Uh, I see an image here that has one to mapping two elements of a set and since it starts with one I think it's kind of safe to say that it is the cardinal uh, yes first no wait ordinal ordinal uh, language is, is that, grammar, cardinal number cardinal number word 
Hardware speed count, ta ta ta. It's definitely related to cardinal numbers. Okay, uh, it's something like that, it's not the main problem here. It's a clear, this is a simple question of mathematics, so um, this is okay. Um, I'll check it later. So, Cambridge starts with that, and you have, uh, and when I say Cambridge, I'm actually talking about Professor Stajano. Um, I don't know if that's how his name is pronounced, but his first name is Frank, and I think Frank is pronounced Frank, so let's trust that. So, Professor Frank starts with a precondition here, and it says that array contains a length of A integer values. So, this is a simple way of classifying our input. And uh, I think it helps reasoning about what we are trying to accomplish here. So we have our input here. And the post condition is essentially what we are expecting to have as our output. And it's an array containing the same integer values. And that's something I had mentioned when I was talking about um, in the previous video when we were implementing. We want the same and we are trying to um, uh, to come up with a solution in place. So, in, usually in programming language we are saying that this is passed as a reference. And uh, so this parameter is actually an input-output parameter. We are receiving an input and in the same reference we are returning our output. Um, and now they are uh, sorted in ascending order, so that's what what we are trying to to come up with here. About the asserts that we were talking about, and we are going to see a lot of asserts in the following um, pseudocodes in this um, series of videos. But the assert here, here is that the first y positions, the first high positions, are already sorted. And that's what I was trying to say when I talked about having an array and half of the array, is, and when I say half is the first part of the array is sorted and um, the later part is unsorted. And our, our, our goal is to push this till we get there. So we went to shrink a sort of portion of the array and, uh, and uh, end with a fully sorted array with all the elements from the original array. And this is our assert and we are inserting a high where it belongs within 0 to high. And that's this a0 high is essentially this. And Exactly, and um, let me think exactly. And this a high is our x. And remember, uh, we don't really need an auxiliary, auxiliary variable. Um, if we swap them. You see, with the implementation I came up in the previous video, you would need an auxiliary variable so you could move every uh, position one to the right, and then you could put um, the the so-called variable in, and that's where the insertion sort name was. Uh, uh, that's how I was justifying the insertion sort name. It inserted the variable. And, uh, we picked the variable, we moved everything one uh, place to the right and we would uh, put our auxiliary variable in. But the thing is, you don't really need to, to do this, to use this temporary variable if you have an, a swap instruction. And that's what happens here. So, if you swap you can have that uh, array from... Uh, I, I ended erasing it, but I think it was something like... 
maybe uh, 3 42 7 I don't really recall but I think it was it had this structure at least I think it that was the case so uh, what happens here is instead of picking 7 no no I think it uh, rather was maybe I don't know but I think it had this property so I think it was something like this maybe so if we pick 3 to the auxiliary box X we then can move this to the right and end with 3 getting there but we can also do the following 7 is sorted so I'm going to use a S to classify as sorted and when we compare with 42, 42 with 7 42 is sorted so it can ha also have the S but when we get to 3, 3 is lesser or equal than 42, so we can swap them. And the array right now is 7, 3, 42. And now 3 is still smaller than 7, so we swap them. 3, 7, 42. What is the issue with this approach? Well, it is clearly correct as well. It also works. We can have this while loop as it is stated here. And while HA is greater than this, we are going to swap and decrease, uh, decrease J. And we end with the correct array. The thing is, with the implementation I had written in the previous uh, videos, and here it is, we were in... Actually, let me think really fast. Well, it's kind of indifferent. I was going to mention something about uh, how, how we were trying to maintain a certain, a certain property uh, regarding the sortedness of our array. But the thing is, it doesn't really matter that much. And it, I don't think it is all that relevant to, to mention that. So. I think it would be more confusing, it, it, it feels more right to me, but I, I guess it is not worth uh, the trouble. Um, so there, there really are just different implementations. Um, I think this one has the advantage of uh, not using an additional variable. Um, the previous one I think is more intuitive of um, of locking through because uh, you see the actual insertion and so the actual insertion I think that gives a better intuition on how insertion sort works but it's nice to go through the both implementations uh, on a production code maybe this one uh, on a pseudo code and even for reasoning about how it works and how you could go about um, implementing it and uh, the complexity of it, um, that kind of analysis maybe maybe the other one. Uh, but we are going to work with this one for now. Um, another thing I would like to mention is that when you analyze the worst case uh, complexity of this algorithm. Uh, you see, um, the worst case complexity of this algorithm is O of n squared, and, and that's because uh, this loop here goes to all the way up to n, so it has clearly n steps on that one. But the thing is, 
you, you don't actually need to have and you, you won't have um, the hand steps on this inner loop so it goes all the way up to J plus yeah it's in the worst case it would go all the way up to J plus 1 that is uh, completely on the other uh, reverses of ascending so a descending sorted array and J plus 1 is, is going to be most of the time uh, lesser than hand but the thing is J plus 1 is in fact reducible to to hand so you can simplify it by saying n plus times n and that's n squared that's how we go to, uh, you deduce the n squared um, worst case scenario complexity worst case, uh, case time complexity of this algorithm um, but if you wanted to be exact on that you could do it in a different way um, that for our interests here and now is not really worth the trouble. So that said, let's. And I see my confusion before earlier before. Uh, see this symbol and this symbol. These two. Oh, you, it's not visible to you. Okay, but the, uh, there are two icons here, and I was confusing the two. So. That's why it took longer to me to get it right before. Um, all right. Oh wait, I'm now looking and I don't think I can... Let me make it visible to you. Um, so. One second. All right. Okay, let me try to show you. Uh, it is not collaborating. Cooperating. Okay. There it is. All right. So I've now noticed that um, the lecture notes, uh, the Cambridge lecture notes, have this exercise when, and they say that swap uh, with x and y means free assignments, and that is a temp variable, and it replaces it and all. And so, improved insertion algorithm, Priscilla code shown in doubt to reduce the number of segments performed in the inner loop. And when I looked at that swap instruction now, uh, um, I thought it was a, an instantaneous swap as a higher order or higher level um, function, uh, something that was part of the language and that a constant time and some low level optimization or magic or CPU related something that was instantaneous so time one um, it's not the case it has actually three assignments and with that in mind uh, maybe let's think yeah if we go back to the code I had show you oh, and I see now that this failed here is just fix the, the recording and there we go if you go back to the code I had written uh, for the first video uh, you see we are actually uh, using this extra variable but um, what we do here is to pick the value and uh, I think I have the other loop let me just see if it is there. Um, okay, so it's this one. All right. So what we are doing here is for high, we go all the way up, we get an X and we decrease the J and we go to the while loop. And if 
J is greater than hex, we attribute J to this one. And the swap instruction was actually free instructions and we are going to pick to the temporary variable. We swap them. Okay, let me, I need to scratch, scratch a little here, it's really fast, so don't worry. I just need to go back here and so they have a temporary variable, yeah, it's the usual swap operation. So we have, let me see, um, these two bits are the same, so in, internally we, in the my code we have hex being equal to uh, let's see. Not this one. This one. Hmm. Oh my! <laughs> the screen is a bit small. Okay, so let's do it uh, this way. X is equals to hey. Right. Makes sense. And then you have an internal loop that goes from J. Um, to say equals to high minus one. And it goes to while. So so this is consistent. J is equals to high minus one. And we have a while that tests H G J is greater than H J plus one. And then you say that you have a temp that is equals to hex. Um, may hex this one, which is our, uh, well, uh, maybe so we don't have, hmm. okay, I'm going to put exactly what we are actually accessing in fact. So this is AJ and uh, AJ is equal to to um, to a um, H A plus one and H A plus one is equal to the temp. Correct, so this is the Cambridge thingy and we want to optimize this and um, so with my approach from the last video we only do HA plus 1 equals HA and in the, the end we do HA plus 1 equals X and you see how do you go about realizing this? It came naturally, naturally to me that this was the, the best solution and now I was kind of um, rethinking about it because uh, this swap thing uh, looked so great when I saw a simple swap line uh, but in fact it, it, is, it really is a dumb implementation because um, a simple-minded implementation I shall rather say um, because we are actually not taking advantage of something that uh, happens naturally with this algorithm and, and the way this algorithm is explained um, actually if it, if, 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 um, makes it clear, makes it, it obvious that we have something going on in this array and that is we are moving all the things one place to the the, the, the right and, and putting something back and, and and 
so we pick something and we move and we, and we insert. So um, doing something like this, maybe maybe something someone is is thinking about um, the actual movements and is trying to save one bit of uh, of um, of spatial space. But in fact. Um, Space is rather cheap when you talk about uh, software. You see, you can always get more more space. It's hard to save on. Uh, processing power tends to be more expensive than, than than space. So, if you have to choose between something that is going to consume more memory or more disk space. Um, or versus going for something that is going to save you time, uh, you probably should go with the option that saves you time. And um, I think that, but that's not really even the case here because you have this temporary variable right there. You see, what would you would be saving of this variable? You actually have it here, so. I, I would say that the, the, the spatial complexity of this, this algorithm versus mine is roughly the same, but the, temporary, the, the, the number of assignments you do is less, sir, is, is one less on my implementation, you see. And that's quite obvious when you look at the pseudocode. You see here, yeah, you have when assignment um, actually let's count with this one first so you have this one assignment you have uh, this second assignment and this third assignment uh, this one happens n times this one happens n times this one happens one time so you have n plus n plus four plus uh, sorry n plus n plus 1 plus 1 so 2 n plus 2 um, that versus having n plus n plus n so in fact if I have 2 n plus 2 and this one is 3 n With this in mind, um, the implementation I gave you of insertion sort in the previous video is somewhat more efficient than the implementation Cambridge gives you in these lecture notes. And their goal was in fact that you would uh, come up, I guess, with the solution I show you. I've shown you. So, yeah. Let me see if they have something else in the exercise. No, they have not. And, ah, interesting. Okay, they have a second exercise here that says provide a useful invariant for the inner loop of insertion sort in the form of an assertion to be inserted between the while line and the swap line. So Cambridge is asking us to to come up and I would I will use this color to come up with um, with a useful invariant for the inner loop of insertion between the while line and the swap line. So they want an assertion right here. And what we could write as an assert for this line. Let's see. Well um Well, X, so, swap. 
We have, we have actually already talked about this, so if we want to assert, uh, what we are want to assert is that hmm. okay, a useful invariant. Um, we talked about some invariants already. Uh, we mentioned that uh, for insertion sort, um, some key invariants. I think I even wrote invariants some somewhere. Cancel. Uh, I even wrote invariants invariants somewhere. Oh, here it is. We have talked about two invariants, and this was really. Uh, um, vague the way we talked about it was but we thought we said that um, this part is already sorted and these ones are the same values as the originals and you see here Cambridge already do the the, the, the assert that these are um, already sorted and it does not uh, assert that they are the same and yet you see in the post condition that the values are the same as the original array before we start um, doing in place changes so the insert I would as the assert I would come up with for this bit of code would be something on the lines of um, and we have to be careful here uh, ha to greater than ha plus 1 and while j is greater than 0 obviously um, I think it is enough to say um, d Uh, actually, mm, by swapping we ensure that the values in A Preserved. Maybe. Now, is this invariant useful? Well, I think it has its usefulness. Um, in which way? In the way that we are doing changes, uh, we are modifying, we are making change. Some make, we are making some change to the ray A, and if we are, we are changing the ray A, and we want the ray A, the resulting ray A, to have the same elements of the original ray A that we are given um, inside this routine, then I think it's legit to assert that the values of A are still the values of A when we are making changes on it. So, I think this is a useful assert, and I think it is a useful invariant to have on an algorithm that is doing changes on, in place changes on a data structure, and it's the case of this insertion sort. And even if we were using different data structures, uh, for example, if we are we were given an array and we were returning a different array, so as to preserve the original one, I still think it would be useful to have an assert, an assert and an invariant that would tell us that the final array, the new array we are creating, constructing, uh, would uh, present the same elements as the original one. So. I think both, uh, this kind of invariant is always something good to have on our um, code um, when working with this kind of uh, problems and algorithms. Um, so yes, I think the solution for exercise 2 would be something on these lines.
moving a little bit forward. I thought uh, there was um, a proof of correctness in the um, in these lecture notes for this algorithm. I already have read uh, on these notes some time ago, and I really think they are properly written. I've spent a bit more time on the second part of the notes that is about graph algorithms and on these notes in particular and so I'm somewhat happy uh, about uh, reading these notes now um, but I don't really remember them with that level of detail at this point um, although I still have a good idea of what they contain it clearly got a bit fuzzy I thought I, they had but they don't seem to yeah. It doesn't really matter anyway because we have um, Carmen and Carmen has a proof of it. So, and we can also write a proof for it ourselves. It's not that complicated. Um, I actually would like to go about this one and maybe one or two more before actually moving forward on the course material I have planned. But I think it's important to get comfortable with doing some formal proofs and I want to um, and that's the main goal here I want to touch on some key points and I, actually on these small questions these two exercises already touched some key points about proofs on algorithms and optimizing them with um, by using the minimal um, resources um, and so I see here just so looking at Carmen to see I grasp all of what we went to mm -hmm. so Carmen really has a nice explanation about uh, insertion sort and how it works and what are loop invariants and things like this. So exactly. So I'll try to follow a bit Corman. Um, it's a way of being sure that I'm not doing something wrong um, I would probably be able to write a correct proof without looking at Carmen but there is a matter of pedagogy and a matter of scientific correction and I want to be both on this video so and, I, and in general it's, uh, it's good to have both characteristics um, but I'm openly show you um, okay sorry about that mice um, and so using Carmen as a basis for this proof I'm not doing it exactly like Carmen um, let's see oh I see now that Carmen implemented the algorithm the same way I did uh, that means that a student, a uh, Cambridge student, would uh, rapidly see the solution if they, if you look at Carmen, which would be something I would probably be doing if I were studying um, this uh, at that moment. I would probably have the lecture notes and the book on my side, so it would spoil my, uh, spoil the exercise for me at that point. But anyway, it's it's, it's it was an easy exercise. Uh, for all the matters, so anyway, I think um, that exercise probably was there more with the intention of uh, calling up the, the attention of the student for this particular um, trick and not really as an exercise for solving or spending a lot of time thinking about it, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Okay, um, I'm going to call the attention, you can also look at Corman anyway, 
and Corman is well written and, and simple. So I just want to um, note some important aspects here. The initialization um, Corman has initialization maintenance and termination. On my edition of the book, these are defined in page 19 um, and still structure 2 is getting started on the, the area. So, let's see. The initialization is what is true prior to the first iteration of the loop. So this is what uh, Cambridge calls of precondition. Oh wait, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, these are loop invariants. What we are talking about here are loop invariants, not the algorithm invariants. So be careful with that. Um, let me move this here. And what we are talking about here is slightly different. You see, when you are making a formal proof of your algorithm, um, your algorithm will most likely have loops, in certain sort, as two loops for that matter. And a good way of, of working out uh, a formal proof for an algorithm like in certain sort, and I don't know if uh, that's what they do here, Doesn't, uh, they, they have compacted a bit, but I'm going to do a formal proof, actually, I'm going to prove it in this way that I'm going to define now. So, for each loop, you should be able to come up with loop invariants. And for each loop invariant, you have the initialization, which is uh, something true prior to the iteration of the loop, the first iteration. Uh, some truth property prior to the first iteration. Okay. The maintenance is something that allows you to say, hey, this was true prior to, um, to the iteration of my loop, and I'm going to maintain its true value, its true state. So, we maintain it if, if it is true, if it is true before an iteration. Oops, let me before an iteration. It remains true before the next iteration. So it is like um, it is true at this point and you do this iteration and after these operations that find this iteration it is still true and so when you go to the next iteration it will be true and since these are the same instructions you are it is expected to stay true at this point and repeat being true so there is a maintenance a maintenance of it, of the truthness of our of this property where you are electing and for the termination 
this invariant gives us a useful property for the proof. Why is this termination important? Why, why don't we work only with initialization and maintenance? Well, the reason why is because um, you could have a loop that wouldn't touch your variable or would assign the same value to your variable and you could say, hey, I have this variable named life whose value is 42 and for each iteration my loop is going to do a lot of stuff about on this array and it's going to reassign 42 to the variable life and it is initialized as, as 42, it is maintained as 42 and it terminates as 42 so it's an invariant. This is a very useful invariant. <laughs> it is not an invariant because it is not useful. 